Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vincent Meza. This is listings to leads. And this is our class about Facebook and Google. Okay. We do a lot of things here with listings to lead. We help agents advertise. We help them get buyer and seller leads. We have awesome uh, automated listing marketing tools, great social media content, free content, auto posted content. We also have software to run ads and that's the focus on our call here today for Facebook, Instagram, and Google. We do have unlimited landing pages and we got 80 plus PDF guides now. So there's just a whole lot here. If you're in real estate and you intend to be in it for a while, it's going to be worth your while to learn everything you got to be able to. There's a lot of, there are a lot of things that agents do and a lot of activities, a lot of actions. And it's our point of view is that if you're going to do anything in real estate, you should be able to capture a lead with it, whether it's in print, whether it's online, certainly if it's on social media or through your CR. And so there are a lot of things that you can do when you're digging your way through our platform. You will notice that everything we've done has some one or multiple call to actions to capture content. So it's definitely worth your while to get your arms around what we can. The point of this class is what kind of ads can you run? Right. And so when we go over to the ad section here, you'll see that in this case, we've got Facebook and Google, and I'm going to drill down through those and it's very easy. It's really, I think, cost effective and time effective. And there are a lot of ways to capture leads and uh, some take more time and some are more expensive and some are faster and cheaper. And then there's all these questions of quality and stuff like that. So I want to focus a little bit on letting you understand or helping you understand when we're talking about Facebook and Google, a little bit about quality. Okay. We're going to start there. So let's go over to Facebook and let's talk about what it actually is and why it works. So we have been training our clients on how to run ads on Facebook since Facebook launched their platform. Okay. So launch their ad platform. I think Facebook is older than listings to leads, but their ad platform was later. And so. When you run it, but the thing about Facebook is people, as you can see, I'm scrolling through here. People follow things on Facebook. They follow their friends. They follow news. They follow. And, and what that means is you can see what all your friends are doing. You can see your grandkids. You can see where they're traveling. You can see whatever nonsense they're getting up to. Right. And that's cool. It's not for everybody. I know a lot of people feel like, oh, I don't want to share stuff. But if you're a realtor and you're in the United States, you want to probably know that 70% of American adults spend 40 minutes every day scrolling through this page, just like I'm doing right now. Okay. And why that's important is if you decide, hey, I want to toss an ad up on Facebook, you know that your audience is going to be there. Right. You know that now, you know, that people are spending all kinds of time here and your ad is going to show up right here where this picture is in the middle. Okay. And that can be very effective. You might have an open house. You might have some information on how to get your home value, or you have something about related to real estate right here, going to be right in front of people. And as they're scrolling through, if it means something to them, they'll be like, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want that answer. But what we got to know about. Facebook is, it's not a place where people come for answers, right? Like they're just scrolling here. This is what, like I said, people do this all day long. So they're not going like, Hey, you know what? I'm going on vacation to Cancun. What's the best hotel or what kind of car do I need? Or how do I sell my home? When they have a question like that, 86% of all questions on the internet begin on this page. Okay. And the kind of search that's relevant to you 
is probably going to be something like this, right? How do I sell my home or homes for sale near me, right? They, these are, there's all kinds of ways to create this kind of question. But when I type that in, how do I sell my home? You can see that there are a lot of results, but you can see these people who are paying with sponsored ads for these keywords in my area. And you can do that same kind of search on Google in your area and find out who your co biggest competitors. And if you decide, I don't actually want to click on these because it's going to chew up a little of their ad money. I don't really want to do that because every time you click on an ad, Google charges, it's called pay-per-click advertising, it's similar to Facebook. If you do a $50 ad and they're charging you $5 a lead, you're going to get 10 clicks, 10 leads. So what I wanted to say and what I want everybody to understand is Google is where people go for answers. They have questions, they want answers, okay? They come here. And that's what makes these leads more expensive. And a lot of people will tell you they are higher quality than the leads that they get from Facebook. I think, however, I want to be, just give you my experience of talking to agents every day of the week. There are a lot, there, there are high quality leads on Facebook and they are cheaper to get. One thing I really like about Facebook, if you are a new agent, or maybe not even a new agent, but an agent that's still building out their brand, you can get a lot of brand recognition on Facebook because you see where it's like, it says here, don't touch it, it's art. Your ads are sponsored by your business page. And every time you run an ad, hundreds or thousands of people see it and start to recognize that you are a, a business. I'm gonna jump out of this. So I'm gonna jump into a live client's ad account. I think a good place to learn is one of our clients is in out the Carolinas. We can see a lot of kind of ad activity there. So I, I set this account up in October of last year, right before Halloween. And they do one thing with our system. They run ads to generate buyer leads for their agents in North and South Carolina. So the entirety of our platform, they just ignore, but it's worth it to them to get a lot of leads, right? They got a lot of agents on their team and they need to get buyer leads to them. That's like first thing. They're not even looking at us for seller. But I think we can learn a little bit about Facebook right here. So when you run an ad, your ads will show up like a little thumbnail here, right? And I want to just show you a little bit of what's going on here. This ad is running, they're spending $120. They spent $120. You can see 120 of 120 has gone out. They got 29 leads at $4.14 per lead. And about 5,500 people saw the ad. Okay. That's good for your branding, right? In this case, an ad that lasted seven days and been seen 5,000 times. The leads cost $4 and 14 cents and they got 29 leads with name, email, and phone number. Okay. And you can see over here, I don't know why this, these leads cost $16. These leads cost $1.90. I don't actually know how Facebook sets the price. It's just remarkable. I don't know. The swing, however, is great. Meaning there's a wide spectrum. What we can see here from an aggregate level, just about what is it, eight months? They've run 304 ads. They've spent nearly $100 per ad, right? So nearly $30,000, but they have 9,600 buyer leads, okay? Their business pages have been seen over 2 million times in North and South Carolina. And you got to think about that right now. This is running what they're running ads on their listings and they're spending a hundred dollars. I'll leave. If I were in the Carolinas, I would be a concern because I don't know where any company is being seen millions of times. And I think one thing, what I've tried to point out here is 
if you are a single agent and people are going and looking on the internet, 86% of all searches start here. Are you anywhere near page one of Google? Because beyond page two, it's useless, right? When I do this search here, remember we, we started to call how do I sell homes. You'll notice that there are seven, over 7 billion results. Okay. So this is page one. And you see all of the big shops. Are you on here? Probably not, right? Are you on page two? You can scroll down and there is a page where you can go to the next page. And I don't know what's happening with my thing here. Yeah, more results. So you can see I'm scrolling. And if you're beyond page two or three, you're not really effective on Google. But... That's just the nature of what's happening. And so when we're running ads, that's one thing I really like about Facebook. It's that you're building your brand at the very same time that you're capturing leads. Okay. I also want to speak a little bit, and we're going to get into the how to here in just a minute here, guys. I want to talk a little bit about lead quality and what's changed and what's moving and where we are today. I think most of you just over a year ago, our interest rates started moving and Lee Chun, in a way, kind of took a break, right? Everybody was ingesting higher interest rates. Now I think the market is ingesting higher interest rates and they could move higher and all those fun things, right? But I want to point out, and so what happened was lead capture really slowed down. People were like, Hey, you know, what happened? But as the market ingested those rates and they realized they still got to buy, they're coming back on. And, I, and I'm pointing out, this is on our YouTube channel. This came in about two months ago. And this lady ran one $35 ad for seven days on Facebook. It has three active buyers and one listing from one seven day ad from Facebook. And I'm pointing this out because a lot of realtors in the past have said, oh no, Facebook leads are not good and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I hear that. And then I also have my other clients saying, oh, we, we convert one out of 70 Facebook leads and we create, convert one out of 40 Google leads. So they know like, yeah, they're not all good, but we're in the time where this lady say, oh no, I'm getting leads right now. And eight days ago, let's see that right here. He's like, yeah, generating 15 leads overnight from one ad. And I've got two conversations. I'm already talking to two people that we're going to work. So, you know, there, if you are, do you think this Facebook ad worked in New York City? Like you said, first of all, Alejandro, my name is Vince. You can catch Scott on other calls, but uh, I'm going to send this to everybody here. And what Alejandro is asking is, do you think this would work in New York City? Well, definitely think it works in New York City. I think it works everywhere that the internet. I don't know. You got to ask yourself, Alejandro, do people use Facebook in New York City? I think they do because I see all kinds of cool little pictures coming out. Of and that would mean that this would work there as well. This lady here who's telling us like she got Three active buyers, one listing is in Maryland. Right. But anyway, I, I just want to speak to the fact that there is a different lead quality, but that Facebook should not be looked down upon. And what I think everybody should understand is that Facebook is the cheapest, fastest way to get buyer lead anywhere. Okay. Now, the way you do it here with our system. We make it incredibly easy. You can go do it in Facebook. You don't need us. You can go do it yourself. It's a little bit messy. You got to learn. It's changing all the time. And there's all kinds of options. Good luck because you might not get the kind of results that you're going to get with us. But here you can see our clients get really solid results. So let's answer any questions before we get started on the how to. Uh, try to, but I don't get many results. Alejandro, are you using our tools to run ads? So Alejandro's saying that he's running ads, but he's not getting any results. So are you using our system or are you doing it some other way? 
you are. Okay. Then let's talk about how we do it and we'll see what's happening, right? This is how you should do it. So there are three kinds of ads that you can run. There are four, one says custom, but I wouldn't do anything custom until you really know how to use Facebook. Okay. And so you can run listing ads, landing page ads, and PDF guide ads. So you get unlimited landing pages. You can create them for home values. You can create, you can do certain sorts of things. And you, we've got 80 PDF guides, half of them for buyers, half of them for sellers. You're branded on every page. And then of course you can get listings. You can borrow listings. You can have your old listings. You can have sold listings. And so all those ads you can run right here. And I signed up for the trial. Is this a personal? Vern, this is all going on your business page on Facebook. So when you come here, you connect to Facebook and it's get at the first thing it says is Vern is this you. It'll take you to Facebook. It'll say Vern is this you. And it says, yes, I am Vern. And you click it in the next page, it says what business pages you want. And you run ads through your business. Alejandro, what kind of ads are you running? Because you're saying you're not getting any results. So I'd like to know what kind of ads you're running. And then we'll, I, but let's carry on. Let's click here and let's do a listing ad on a property that's just listed. Okay. You choose your property. You want to leave it on lead ads. This means you get pre-populated name, email, and phone number and click create an ad. And when you click create an ad, we're going to write the ad. We're going to get the software and we're going to make it all work. And the only thing you have to do is click this green button. And that's going to create an ad that looks like this. And it's going to be a seven day ad. And it's going to be worth $35. Okay. Now buyer leads. In general, cost between on a, between a dollar fifty and three dollars each. When we looked at the overall aggregate of this account, it's about three dollars, right, each per lead. So if you use that as a metric, and that you've got an ad for thirty five dollars, you're probably going to get like eleven or twelve leads, right? That's what you should expect from an ad when you're running something that is for sale, right? Let's go over here and see. Yeah, Alejandro is running ads on landing pages. And then you start getting into what are you doing? So we got all kinds of landing pages. Alejandro, what are your landing pages? We might want to just go over there and look at that. But we'll see if we have time later. So to get buyers, let's make it really clear. Even if you don't have listings, you can create, you can borrow a listing and put it in your account. And what I'm showing you right here is the fastest, most effective way to get buyer leads. Market your own listing of a home that's for sale or market something else. Now, there are 40 PDF guides for buyers and you could run an ad on that. It won't be as effective. And what Alejandro is saying over there, over in Manhattan, is that he's running landing page ads. I don't even know what kind of landing page you're running, but for some reason, things aren't working out. So. Alejandro, you let me know what kind of landing pages ad you're running, and then we'll discuss it. But there are 40 PDF guides. So I'm going to just go through ad and show you that there are 40 PDF guides for buyers and 40 PDF guides for sellers. But just on the buyer side, let's just go through the exercise and do it. And it's taking a second to open up. So let's go with this. Seller. Yeah. Okay. So is that, does that mean, Alejandro, you're running an instant home valuation ad? Like, what is my home worth in Manhattan? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, you want to talk private. Right? That's great. Reach out to our support team. So if we're running PDF guide ads and we're talking about buyers, I want to point out that you can run any of these PDF guides. There are 40 of them for buyers. You're branded on every page. And yes, you will get buyer leads, but you can see that these, these all have like unique kind of stories. So they don't all fit everybody, right? So if you're looking for buyers, the fastest way is to market a listing, even if you borrow a listing. And you can go here and say, hey, I'm going to do one of these anyway. I actually think it's smart to run PDF guide ads 
because like I showed you earlier, thousands of people are going to see it. And some of people are going to download it. These leads will cost more than the $3 or $1.50 that I mentioned earlier. So they're going to be more expensive. You're going to get fewer leads, but you can't get buyer leads this way. Okay. If we run an ad on a landing page. Now, what Al Hunter is saying is he's writing free home values. I'm thinking that's what he's doing. I'm not exactly sure. I've got a property valuation plus here. And this is how you get seller leads, right? And I do want to point out just because I want to finish the discussion of landing pages for buyers. Let's see here. I don't know if we even have. Yeah. So this is a custom landing page for home buyers, but I want to do this one here. So you can create custom landing. Page. Here's one on new construction. And I think if I create this, there's going to be a landing page and it's going to write the ad. But you have to put a little bit of common sense on these, right? The fact that you can run the ad is great, but what's actually happening in your market, right? And specifically when it comes to new construction, I think you've got to think about what people are thinking of when they're buying a home. And typically it's what city is it in? At what price? If it's new construction, I don't care as long as it fits in my price, right? And so people will run things like this. This is designed to get buyer leads, but they don't get as many leads because what people are really looking for, thinking about is buying something, in this case, in Austin, right? You, the fact that you can do something doesn't always mean that it's always going to work. But I will tell you something that could make this work a little bit better. And this might be happening in your market, but you can customize this. It might not. There, I know that there are some states that have like no new construction. And there are other states that have hundreds of units coming online, right? So this doesn't work for everybody. But one thing that I noticed in just following news is that you can actually get a 5% mortgage. when buying here, right? Because these builders are buying down the mortgage for these people to get people in. So if you've got stories like that, you can customize your concept here. You can even customize this page. You could, that red banner, it could all be about a particular development. You could actually make these things work really well. But sometimes if you're just going right out of the box, these don't work well at all. And so you have to think, the first thing about new construction, I'm showing you how to do it, is that it's not the leading, it's not the most important thing to, I think if, I, I haven't seen a survey, but I'm pretty sure if you said, hey, what, is new construction super important to you? It's not as important as location or price, right? And so that's the thing. So if we go back to the ads, now we know we can run a PDF guide ad for buyers. We know we can run landing page ads for buyers. And we can run Facebook listing ads for buyers, right? The Facebook listing ads are the cheapest. Any questions about just getting buyers? We're going to get into the seller thing here in just a second. When we run Facebook ads for sellers, there are two kinds of ads that I highly recommend. If you can, under contract or pending ads, these are the cheapest seller leads you're going to get from Facebook. Leave it on lead ad so we get pre-populated name, email, and phone number, and click create an ad. A lot of agents never market their homes when they are pending or under contract, right? And only do this if you want to develop a database of people who own a home, right? Who are thinking about selling their home. We write a pretty standard thing here. Right. Like here's the ad. It's now under contract. Right. They close. When it's sold, it will hit your own value. You might actually have some things, and I know this is different around the country, but you might have some data points that can make this a more powerful ad. Right. Like we got eight offers. Right. You probably can't talk about price when it's pending and stuff like that, but you can say 
seven qualified buyers still look right. And this gives me a reason if I see this, like, oh, okay. I wasn't thinking about it. Hey, I'm, I own a home I'm on the fence about it, but now I can see that you're selling homes and you've got offers. And also what I'm hearing, I literally spoke to somebody last week and she said it was under contracts at the end of two days. Now this isn't every market, right? But if that's what's going on, take a moment to customize your ad and then publish it. I want you to understand though, that this is a $50 ad and it's a seven day ad. So it's going to expire in seven days. We have been told from our clients that they get leads from this kind of ad, meaning pending or under contract, $2 and 50 cents each. So if you spent $50 and the ad and the lead is 250, that means you get about 20 leads, right? 20 leads of Navy mail and phone number of homeowners. So keep that in mind because that's the cheapest seller lead you're going to get from Facebook. The next most expensive seller lead from Facebook is on a sold property. And obviously everybody's got to pay attention to their local MLS rules. Can you do that? All kinds of questions like that and answer like that. Yeah, you know, let's see here. I don't know why my browser is acting really slow. So while, can, let me ask, can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think you can hear me. I don't know what's happening here. Well, we create a listing ad on a whole that sold. Same process, same kind of customization, right? You want to, if you got a bunch of, or you've got a bunch of offers and things like that's going to get people to click because, oh, there's a beautiful home. The thing about selling a home, like you as realtors, you do this professionally. Us as homeowners, this is one of the worst experiences you're going to get into. So if you are selling it fast, if you are selling it above asking, if you are getting a lot of offers, that's an incentive for me to respond to your app. And that's why you need to customize these things to make sure that people are seeing it. I do want to point out this client here has a lot of homes, right? All over North South Carolina. And often it realtors will cherry pick, like here's a cool property and here's one that's not cool or whatever. They want to have the most, the nicest looking homes. And that makes sense. But you'd be surprised what homes generate leads. And so I just wanted to say that. So when we publish this ad again, it's $50, seven days. But Facebook knows that when you're running an ad on a property that's sold, that this is more important to you. So they charge six to $7 per lead. So if you divide seven into 50, I think you get about seven. So same 50 bucks, only going to get seven leads as opposed to 20 when you're doing that. All well, that being said, these are not slung on gas, but we do have client meeting. You do have to customize them to make sure people will put because they'll see it and they'll, they'll see why. Oh, that's interesting. It's a big deal. If you're really affecting, if you're really but selling a home, let people know. How is the lead info captured? We'll click on the end. You see the learn button. They click anywhere that ad, a little window pops up on Facebook. So let's see. So there would be an ad, a little button down here that's to learn more. And when that pops up, that looks like a chat panel, like this here. And to say, would you love more information? And there's only one answer. It is yes. And a phone number and email is pre-populated on this page from their profile. And most of us have our current name, email, and phone number in our profile because if we get locked out, that's how we're going to get back in. So that's how we're capturing the leads. And we email it to you directly. If you have your CRM connected, we're going to drop them in there too. I think this is a great, uh, one, I think it's always better to have a lead with a phone number as opposed to a lead without a phone. And Facebook ads, just like what we're doing right here, is the most effective way that I have seen for you to get lead, leads with naming dollars. Right. 
from our platform. So let's see, go back. So we've talked about running sold ads. We know that those leads cost six to seven bucks. We've talked about running pending ads. We know that those leads cost about $2 and 50 cents. It's taking a while for my ads page to pop up. There are two more kinds of ads that we can do for sellers on Facebook. And one is to run an ad on a landing page. And we're going to get that one less. That's the one that I think Alejandro is doing. But there are definitely some issues with that. So that's why I want to hit that. PDF guides for sellers. Now, I encourage you to go to the PDF guide page, download some of these, get familiar with them, and decide which ones you want to do. I'm just going to do this one here, divorce and real estate, right? Because I think lead ads, because I like name, email, and phone number, and cream enough. I think that the average length of home ownership in the United States is, what, it's seven or eight years, right? Seven or eight years. Oddly enough, that's the average length of a marriage, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure wherever you are, somebody might be thinking about, it, right? Like maybe I need to get it first, right? So this might be always relevant, timely in any market, right? Anyway, there are 40 different topics to, to choose for homeowners that you can get something out. Now, it's a $50 ad, seven days, just like the others. All you got to do is click publish, but these leads can often cost $10 each. I've even seen them cost 15 and even $30 each. So now you've got to ask yourself, how much do I want to spend to get leads that are, and what, when you're selling a home, there is a commission that you're going to make. And I have clients in different parts of the country are like, Hey, $30 leads and name me on phone number. I will gladly take because I know I can close at this ratio and I'm totally doing that. That's what I, and that might not work for everybody, but I just want you to understand that can happen. So when you're running the ad, when you, the first time you will see like, Hey, I got two leads or I got one lead. You'll see if it works or not. Right. And you'll start to learn your costs. So PDF guides are useful. They're also, you're getting the concept, like when we talk about impressions here, hundreds or thousands of people are going to see that, that you actually are a resource when it comes to real estate and force or real estate or whatever topic you're choosing, right? So it's good to build your brand on Facebook with those kinds of ads as well. But let's talk about this one on free home values, because that's Probably the one that Alejandro is using. And this is the one that I talk to agents about and tell them this does not work very well. And there's an, a couple of reasons why. So we need to tackle that. So let's imagine I can't quite work in this one here. Let me jump back in this. Let me jump back in this challenge. The trick about running home value ads on Facebook, I think the number one problem is you cannot target. Okay. Facebook has a minimum of a 15 mile radius. And if you're targeting a particular area, you're, it, it's just going to not work for you. Let me give you an example. I'm going to go to landing pages and I'm going to create a home value. And Alejandro's on this call sitting in Manhattan. And you might think like typing in Manhattan would work, right? Like what is my Manhattan home worth? It might work. Maybe not. What might work is a neighbor like Chelsea. If I own a home in Chelsea, I want to know that my Chelsea home value, not all of Manhattan because there's all kinds of parts of Manhattan, right? That's similar for most people when we're talking about Miami. There's Miami is a big sprawled out place, but is Coconut Grove, if I own there, is that really 
do I want to know that my area? And so getting granular can help, but here's the trick. When you create a granular page, Facebook is not going to help you. So let's do something here. Let me do my ear. I am in Pleasant Hill and let's see, I'm going to just create one. Let's do Chelsea. Let's do Chelsea. This is a neighborhood in New York. Nice. Property valuation plus gives, gives an instant home value. I guess there's a space there. If every create a label. And you have to go through these steps that I'm showing you. Otherwise you will likely not succeed. And just so we all know, this kind of ad of home valuations is extremely, I think it's going to be really tough to do in New York, but if you follow these steps, it's going to help you. This is also true. What, what I'm explaining in New York is actually true all over the country. And you'll understand why in just a moment. Okay. When we create a page like this, you see this generic coffee cup thing. This does not instill a lot of confidence. And you got to remember that if you're throwing it on up on Facebook, it's in front of a lot of people who don't know you. And I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of spam in this world on your phone and text messages and definitely an email. And nobody wants to sign up for a national spam campaign, right? So the first thing you got to do is change the background picture to something that looks like, you know, your area. Chelsea, I walk around Chelsea. What's over there? That, that Brooklyn, what's that big old cool place? It's not called Brooklyn. It's the yard, that incredible new kind of high tech area that was built. But because I can't cut it, like this is cool. So if you had a picture of this, if then I was like marketing my area, I would know like, oh, you know, my, area, right. My neighbor. And you want to have something like that. Now this is New York and it's super slick and this might like throw a lot of us off. So I do want to talk about what works in small towns. I set up the office accounts around the country. And when I set up Summit, New Jersey, which is a town for Coldwell Banker, this town is 22,000 people. Nothing like that is going to be relevant. You know, what's relevant is the Summit Diner. It's an old restaurant. It's on Main Street in Summit, New Jersey. And it's that kind of place where you get your greasy potatoes on the weekends and hang out. Everybody knows Summit Diner. And what I'm trying to point out is when you're asking somebody online or in print, who doesn't know who you are, having I mean, something that everybody knows really helps. The owners of or managers of Coldwell Banker in New Jersey said our number one ad for home values is the one with Summit Diner. And that's hurdle number one. Change that picture to something that is meaningful to your local area. Okay, that's step number one. But step number two is actually way more complicated or the thing that we got to tackle. And, but this is true. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm having a problem yeah. getting my browser to work. Give me a second. So let's talk about the reality of targeting. Right. And this is important to everybody, but Chelsea, it will be particularly problematic. And this is true. Like if you're in LA, it's even true. I live in a suburban community, of what do you call it? Of Northern California. So I've got towns all around me. Like you can drive out of my city, Lafayette and be in a different town in 10 minutes in four different directions. Right? So what we're looking at here is a map of New York. And what we're looking at here is a map of the surrounding area. Well, that's a little bit wide, a little bit wide. If you were at an end, yeah. So right here where it says New York in this little box, I don't know if you can see where my mouse is, that's Chelsea, New York. But when you run an ad on Facebook, and let's go over here, do this. 
you cannot target less than 15 miles. And that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest problem with running home valuation ads on Facebook. And for some areas that can work, that can still work. And that's, I think areas where cities are spread out, maybe Texas is a big state, Ohio, there's towns that there, there is nothing around 15. So that ad can work really well. But in a lot of areas, especially in New York, that could be really tricky. And that's why, because I'm trying to give us an exact, but almost everything on this map, yeah, everything on this map that you can see right now, they're all going to see my, what is my Chelsea home worth? And that's not going to help you out, right? Because you're just, you cannot target. And that gets us to a point where I often cover this in their top tools for more listings is you want to create an audience. You see this blue button here? It's custom audiences. And if you want more listings in your business, you need to be taking advantage of this. And this is a bigger, deep discussion, but you can buy a list of homeowners from a lot of companies, Remind. Red X, I think HomeSnap has it. Sometimes there are MLSs. You might be in an MLS where they will give you, we just all own a list of homeowners. If you get that list to be a thousand deep, a thousand names, you can upload it right here. You, this is the format. This is the spreadsheet that you put it in. And then you call it Chelsea homeowners or Manhattan no homeowners, right? Or whatever you want to call it, or you can call it St. Louis homeowners. And you upload it and you import it. And that list will live in your account. It will live in your Facebook account, even if you quit working with us. And if you then go, Hey, I want to run an ad on a landing page and I'm going to do my Chelsea one. And I click create an ad. Now, when you create the ad, now we should have customized it, but we don't have time for all that. Now, when you do that, you notice this kind of ridiculous thing over here that doesn't instill any trust. I know everybody has a coffee cup and a cell phone these days, but I need to know the buying area and you know that. Right here where it says retarget current leads, you could actually tar type in whatever list you created, right? Like Chelsea Homewood. That's the biggest problem with running a home valuation app on Facebook is you cannot target people. Okay. And we've been talking about New York, but that situation happens in many parts of the United States. And I, if you're going to be in real estate for a while, like more than three years, and you want to have listings in your business, I recommend that you get those lists of those homeowners in all of the geo farm areas that you want. Now, this is a bigger discussion and a broader. I live in Lafayette, California. Okay. Let me bring it to a place that I can, that I can explain. I live in Lafayette and my town, I would want to have that built out as like my key farmer, right? But there's also a, a couple of few towns like Walnut Creek and Pleasant Hill and maybe Moraga back here. So these are five different areas. I would want a list of all homeowners of Pleasant Hill, all homeowners, separate list, Walnut Creek homeowners, Lafayette homeowners, not all together, because let me tell you, the price difference between Lafayette and Pleasant Hill is at least a couple hundred thousand dollars. So if you're running an ad saying, oh, I want to, let me get that value of your Contra Costa County home, that ain't going to work. Okay. Homes over here can cost half of what they cost over here, even a third. So going broad and saying, Hey, I, I, let me help you in whatever county. No, if I own over here, I want to know that my area, that's why you have to go granular when you create your landing page, but Facebook is always going to have a 15 mile radius. So you got to get that list of people who own those homes. In the, in, in the, how do we, yeah, that own the homes 
in each of those areas. And then when you go to create your ad, you, instead of building a custom audience, you type in Lafayette homeowners or Pleasant Hill homeowners because you've created those lists in your Facebook account. Does everybody understand that? This is, uh, this is important. Yeah, Vern, that's a different question. Should we upload our current database? I would by all means upload that. And Tamer here is saying you can get a free list from RPR. So that's super cool, right? I didn't know that they have that, but if you got an RPR, you can get those lists. If you're going to be in this business for a while, you want to upload those inside Facebook and target people. By the way, you also want to use that same list and mail our number one, what mail our print tools. So this gets into the class, which is not today's class or top, top ways, top tools to get more listings, but we have incredibly powerful print tools to help you get listings. You would be targeting the same group of people. And this is where it gets very smart. If you're targeting these people with one list in print and targeting them on Facebook, this is a really intelligent way for you to targeting these people. So Vern, where do you get those? Tamer is saying RPR, Remind.com. I think Red X does it. And I think Homestap. If anybody else knows on the call here right now where you can get a list of homeowners like that, I would recommend that. A lot of our clients just reach out to their title partners and say, hey, can you get me a list of homeowners in Lafayette? All of them, right? And then you are just running ads. Whenever they're relevant to homeowners, you target those people, right? Um, when you're doing this for buyers, you don't need to do that. You just use the radius. And that's really the big thing of how to make a home valuation ad work on Facebook. And then they can work incredibly well, but you have to go through those steps to make that work. Let's talk about the other big deal. You need, you need name, email, and phone number. And you don't always need it in a, but you don't. So we've talked about running ads. What did I click on here? We talked about running ads on, oh, I click on page here on Facebook. We got to talk about Google, right? And that's because as I started the call, 86% of all questions are asked on this webpage. And I'm going to show you the easy way of doing it. What the heck, man? Excuse me. Ah, okay. I don't know how the colors change. Just the, so weird. First of all, our Google software does cost an extra $30. So when you click this button, it's going to tell you this. Thing. You can actually have a 30 day free trial, but it's $30 just to have software, which makes Google really easy. I recommend doing landing page ads or a PDF guidance. Okay. And we know about how to create and customize an ad. So it's the same process. I'm just going to do a PDF guide and I'm going to do for sellers and Five dangers, uh, lower price. Okay. So create that ad. And the thing about that is you have to do an extra step, right? You could type in Manhattan or whatever your favorite town, right? But this one doesn't matter about the radius or anything like that. And this isn't specifically talking about Manhattan. So when people saw it outside, big deal. If it's related to them and it means something to them, great. When you click view link and you don't have to do this, but I just want you to understand we're driving people to this landing page. They have to fill this information out in order to download, right? So you're going to get leads when they click that. It's a $50 a day budget. Okay. And I don't know this because I've been giving patients all day. Seller leads on Google are expensive. Leads are always more expensive on Google than they are on Facebook, right? So this is a seven day ad with a daily budget of $50. And we set that daily budget because we don't exactly know the cost of leads. Remember how I was telling you the cost of seller leads on Facebook? We've been running ads on Facebook for almost 10 years now. So we have a lot of data. We can answer that. I don't have that much data on Google yet. And so I'm just going to tell you what I know. In Dallas, 
seller leads cost $30 each. So you have a daily budget of $50. That means you're probably going to get one lead, one lead a day, right? Because you'll chew up 30 and there'll be 20 and there's no leads for 20 bucks. I know in Pennsylvania, I was talking to somebody, those leads cost 1750. I also know it was, I think in Idaho, those leads cost 1750 there as well. Okay. So it does, it depends on where you are in the country. Alejandro, you're sitting up in New York. I would not be surprised if those leads cost $50 each because oddly enough, the same exact ad costs more in Manhattan as it does in Elk, Nevada, where there's 2000 people. It's just competition, right? I think that's the biggest driver of that. So you'll have to figure that out yourself of like, how is Google working for me? And so we've got it at 50. You can adjust it up or down, but you need to understand how much it's going. It's only a seven day out. So that's how long it's going to seven times 50 is 350. So you're going to see what's happening there. And you can run, like I said, PDF guide outs. You could also run landing page outs. So again, you want to customize that landing page to be, have a, be relevant to your, to your market. What the heck happened just there? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm on the risk. <laughs> Jeez, I need more coffee today. Sorry. So we run an ad and we use Google and we drive them to a landing page that you obviously want to customize. So it means a lot because when we're doing something on Facebook, we're getting their name and email and phone number pre populate. When you're doing it on Google, we're sending somebody to a landing page. So that has to be like effective and relevant. I have a landing page here for, let's say Pacific, let's see what we've got here. The Pacific Grove is where, I think over by us in California, by Monterey and Pebble Beach. You want, you know, what's going on here is if you click view link, we're sending people to this page, right? And you know that how that's gonna work. So, What's important is, I'm just going to type in longer and I think that's You need to type in the city where you're targeting and you know your budget now and you click publish. And that's how that works, right? I do want to just point out just for our knowledge, you don't need to do this, but these are all the keywords that we're putting in there. Okay. So this will help you because you don't have to do this manually. You do have to create inside Google multiple headlines, but we're doing it for you automatically. Okay. You have to have multiple descriptions when you create an ad. And yeah, we do that for you automatically. So that's why you want to use our software is we just make it incredibly easy. Also, I've been inside Google. It's really ugly and hard to figure out. So it's worthwhile kind of stepping up. If you're going to, again, if you're going to be in the business and you intend to have more listings. You need to use Google, you need to use Facebook, and you need to use our print tools for homeowners. All that, by the way, is covered. Vern, there is a landing page for cash offered. I'll show it to you in just one second. This is our YouTube channel. Hi, my name is Laura. This lady right here who's talking, you can listen to it later. I think I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned this at the beginning of the call. I'm going to send this to you now. One thirty-five dollar ad. She had three active buyers of one listing in less than seven days. Okay. That's how that works. So Vern was asking, is there cash on? So if we go here to create landing page, there is something called I buy. And I think that's where you would start for you would type in the name of your channel, you create a landing page and you can just customize it. Okay. So that's Google. And Facebook and the kinds of ads you can run. Are there any questions about what we talked about? Using Google ad, would you start with the landing page or the PDF? I think I would test them both out, Tony. Yeah. I think a landing page is an obvious answer, but some of these PDF guides are just really useful, right? They are, they speak to a particular issue. And that can be very helpful as well. And so it's worth testing them out. There are 40 for homeowners, right? 40 different concepts. 
short sale might be more relevant in your market than in, in other markets, right? Uh, even things like trust and estate planning, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's related and, and you can actually change that. Let's, let me just show you something here, what we can do. Go back to ads and let's do estate planning. Cause the one thing about Google is, and with the keywords is you can really target people who are not thinking about it, but need to. So let me show you what I'm saying. I can create a Google ad on a PDF guide for homeowner. I already know that I'm branded on every page, but I can say, you know what? I want to do an ad on, we, we were looking at them over there in the other section, on a state plan, right? And click create ad. And here's something about Google that is unusual. So let's target Lafayette, California, right? And that's where I am. And I know that there's a landing page there. It's going to ask for information. But when I click on advanced options, estate planning lawyer, these are the keywords, right? What is a really relevant keyword to this? 401k. Just very simple. If I'm doing research on a 401k, because I don't know, maybe I've got a 401k. Maybe estate planning is a big deal, right? Maybe something like retirement, right? I'm going to retire. I'm doing a search on Google. Is estate planning relevant? It sure is. And that's what Google is so awesome for. So you can update your keywords and make it work just a little bit more for you. That's what I like about it. People are asking serious questions. 86% of all people ask questions on Google. These keywords are very powerful. I'm going to send you one more thing. And if you have more questions, let me know. I like this article as we're talking about Google because these are the top words that people are searching. And I'm going to send this article to you right now. I would highly recommend if you're thinking about Google that you hold on to this link. It's top real estate SEO keywords. This is what it is. And they refresh this. They go out into the internet and they, and they go and refresh this list. So it's good to say. These are the keywords that people are using. These are the searches. Houses for sale near me. Houses, Zillow houses. For this is what buyers are typing. Okay. You might want to know that as you're, as you're thinking about what's my Google strategy. If you are into getting more listings, just scroll down the page because they also have those keywords. Selling a house, cost of selling a house, how to sell a house by owner, right? All these things are what people are thinking mm -hmm. about. So as you're putting your language out there, if you're just writing articles, if you're writing a post on social media, this is what people are thinking about, okay? If you're doing an ad, these are the keywords you wanna think about. You don't have to use our Google software, but if you're gonna be in the business, I, I think you need to have a Google strategy. I would save this page and always go check it out because they refresh it and you're going to know what people are thinking about right now, how to sell a house, how long does it take to sell a house, all that stuff. This is really useful. And just so you know, our tech team and marketing people, they refresh these with the, these keywords that you're using in our software that are automatically there. We've got a handful of articles just like this one, and we go to make sure and update it. So we're doing this automatically when you're using our software. If you're not using our software, make sure you go out and, and hold on to this art. So I don't see any more questions. I'll ask one last time, and I want to thank you for joining me here. Oh, let's see. I do see a question. Hold on. Can I speak to the frequency of posting on Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And you saw that you can set a calendar. This is, there's a section up here called social content. Social content is not ads. But, and I'll give you a couple of reasons why. When you come here, and actually there is a place where we can auto run ads for you too. But here, when you come here, it's going to say, connect your social media accounts. Then it's going to say posting schedule. 
And now you can say, hey, I want once a week or I want every day of the week. And then what topics? What I really want you to know, and I talked about this in the Get Started class, which is on our YouTube channel. You want to turn this page on. And there's 45 different topics that you can talk about. And it's self content, it's colorful, it's conversational, and it's good content to get on your, on your social media account. But right close to the top, See, these are all the stories that you can, anything highlighted in green is turned on. Right here is PDF guides. Remember those PDF guides I kept talking about? 40 for homeowners and 40 for home buyers. You can just tell us to auto post them to your social media accounts. So you're setting the calendar. I think, I can't answer that question of how often, what the frequency is. When it comes to Facebook, I think every agent should be running at least one ad every week. It could be about a landing page. It could be about a listing. It could be about a borrowed listing. It could be about a home that's just listed, open house, or sold. It could be about any of our PDF guides. You should at least be running one ad. And I'll tell you this, maybe this will help you understand. When I talk to realtors who are brand new, green, just got their license, no business, just trying to figure out what to do, I tell them to run at least $200 a month on Facebook. That's four ads. That's one seven ad, one seven day ad every week for 50 bucks. Your brand is going to grow, right? People are going to see it. And remember, you're going to do this month after month and you're going to collect leads every month. I, that's the bare minimum burden. Like that's like green, you're starving and you have a license. If you're a realtor who actually manages and handles real estate listings, like one or two a month, I'd probably tell you to be spending between three to 500 a month on Facebook. And in that case, you would maybe have two ads a a week and you'd be capturing probably at least 150 to 250 leads every month. And you need that kind of volume of leads if you want to close business, right? So that's just Facebook. For a real realtor, you've been in it for a while, three to five hundred dollars a month. For Google, I would definitely recommend you're running ads on Google. But now that you got to figure out yourself, what do seller lead cost on Google? If it's thirty dollars each, now if I spent three hundred dollars on a month on Google, I'm going to get ten leads. Okay. Every month. Am I going to close all those leads? I will tell you this. And I talked to a lot of teams, a lot of people who are very focused on conversion. They said, we close one out of 10, I'm sorry, one out of 40 Google leads. So I don't know your closing, right? You're all different kind of people. I don't know your market. I don't know where you're sitting there, but the real estate market is not the same in every state. So if it takes you. 40 leads or 50 leads, you got to figure out what the leads cost for you, right? The high quality listing leads do come from Google. There are good listing leads coming from Facebook. And then we've got our nearby whole owner layer, which is like some of our highs. That's all about listing information. I'm going to send you something. This is on my personal channel. Since we're talking about it, you've all hung out here long enough. I had a call with an agent last week and they wanted to know what do I have to do to get listed? And I do this call like every two weeks, top people to get more listings. But this one might be, it's helpful because I really spelled out just what I spelled out. Yeah. 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 Um, and it really gives those numbers for that we just talked about, right? It spells it out. It's like, if you want listings, you got to do print, you got to do Facebook, and you got to do Google. And it talks about the cost and kind of how to figure out the math, right? So I hope that helps everybody. If you want listings, I would watch that call. It's a quick one. It's 25 minutes. That's my story for today. So anyway, everybody, take care. Oh, Alejandro, you can email me at Vince at Listings to Leads, or you can find my number on the website. But it's- it's best just to email me. So call. All right, everybody, have a great day. And um, thanks for joining me. And this call will be on the 
Mastermind Group and on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Alejandro. I hope this helps you. But I will say one thing, just as Alejandro was saying, if you're not figuring it out, if you're not getting good results, go in our support group. And that's our support team. Go in our mastermind group. Ask them why. There are lots of ways to make mistakes. We covered one of the big ones on home evaluation. I also covered that one on new construction. I've had plenty of people say, hey, I ran an ad on new construction. I got enough. And because it's just not that real, you have to make it really have a bite. We make it easy to do things. We talked about that for about an hour. We make it incredibly easy to run ads on both Facebook and on Google. But you might have to put a little bit of thought behind it to really make it work. All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.